Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Delta Rune Files. So I saw some of the reception to the last video, and I say um, thank you guys so much for checking that one out. It's honestly very shocking that I got so many views on it, but like, you know, I guess Deltoon and Undertale really is hitting a resurgence now. But yeah, moving on, if this is your first time here, then let me go over real quick what I do here. Basically, this is going to be a series where I go through each character of Deltoon, slowly analyzing them and discussing a bit about them. And then by the end of the series, I plan on making a full-on whiteboard where I put all the different characters on there and point out every single connection between them. And point out what I think is going to be like the big ultimate thing for each character by the end of um, Deltrun itself. Alright, so now that we've gone over that, let's actually get into the video. Well, thank goodness I'm using a whiteboard because this episode would have ended badly. Well, not as complicated as Chris, Susie at this stage of the game is a lot like a lot of the other characters. Basically having a big mystery around them that we can't really solve at the current stage of the game. But there are some major facts that we do know about Susie, so let's get into it. First of all, it's stated that Susie recently moved into hometown and doesn't really know too much of what's going on. Especially when it comes to deaths, as Susie um, might be a little bit like suspicious of what happened, or doesn't really like, know about what happened. She eats a lot of shock, and I mean a very much amount. And uh, that's about it, really. There's honestly not that many facts that we know about Susie before the events of Chapter 1 and 2. Only thing that we can really go off of is that she had a previous interaction with Chris, which we will get into later. And everything else in this would be speculation at the time of the game. At this rate, there's only one thing we can nail down safely about Susie's character, and that's the speculation on her home life. So the whole fact about her eating chalk, along with like various other objects, can tell us like how she lives or how her home life is. When she's presented the room that Rousey gives her, she comments how she has a room to her own now. We don't know where Susie's home might be. Heck, in chapter 2, Susie decides to follow Chris home instead of going to her own. And it seems like when Susie went to the phone to call her parents to ask if she could like hang out with Chris and everything, it doesn't seem like she actually called anyone unless she spoke really quietly, but like, seems like she went to the phone, pretended to like, pretended to do, do something and then not actually call. It's kind of safe to assume that Susie might not have the best home life. You don't really know what's going on with it, but after chapter 2 came out and people point how the queen represented Noelle's mom or may have represented Noelle's mom, which I'll get into in that video eventually. Well, the king might be a representation of Susie's dad potentially with how he treats Lancer. It's not a confirmed thing at all and heck is more so just guessing at that point, but it is something to point out and something to remember, I guess, when talking about Susie. But Susie's mysterious and unknown life isn't the only thing interesting about her. That being her strangely resisting our control as the player. This is something I'll bring up more with other characters as well, but when it comes to Susie, Susie seemingly can just ignore our control. Chris can't ignore our control because, you know, we are literally inside of them. Okay, that sounds weird, but we're literally the heart inside the soul, like the lyrics say. Noelle, although she follows our control in both routes, she can be broken basically to become our puppet through the power of the Snowgrave route. Like when we give her the Thorn Ring, it has a unique ability called Trance, which I'm guessing locks Noelle into our control. And lastly, Rousey, which although we don't know the exact reasons as to why, he seems heavily to state to us that our choices do matter, which Susie also like multiple times at the start of chapter 1 talked about our choices not mattering, so you know, they're basically two polar opposites. Susie multiple times takes control of, away from us as the player and well, does her own thing. These include moments where we have our dialogue choices just taken away from us before we can even make them. During most of chapter 1, Susie wouldn't listen to us up to only where she started to trust Chris. 
which I would like to point out that she started to trust Chris, not us. Susie basically adds the ability for other party members to do their own actions, which according to Rousey is Chris's unique ability, though that's probably a bit of RPG protagonist logic, so maybe it's not too much to look into, but it is something to remember. And especially when we try to give her dialogue choices, she seems to just ignore them and says what she thinks instead. Heck, we know she hears us a bit based on what she says in chapter 1, but it's definitely like a whisper to her, similar to how it was with Noelle and Snowgrave. I think this is a really interesting aspect of Susie's character, and I feel like this is the entire crux of Susie and Chris's relationship. We know that throughout the game that we slowly get Susie to follow us more and more, especially in chapter 1, but in reality, it's really that we're just getting Susie to trust Chris more and more. Remember, they don't know about the whole us controlling Chris thing, so she just views Chris as being themselves. And I think that's why Chris became friends with Susie and vice versa. We know Chris genuinely cares about Susie throughout the chapters, as the way they say their dialogue about the psychic dark world indicates that they actually want to go there. And when finding Susie in chapter 1 during the Susie and Lancer fight, just before the box disappears, it goes immediately to the right option, saying not to fight. There's even another big piece of evidence before the chapters even start. Going through one of Noelle's blogs during the Spamton sweepstakes event, tells us a story where Noelle saw Chris and Susie interact with each other. Most likely this was a bit before chapter 1 happened, and Susie was bullying Chris basically. You know, telling them classic stuff like, you know, no one cares about them, no one will miss them, and then they would, like, bite Chris's head off because it tastes like apples or whatever. But Chris would just seem to, like, laugh all this off. And then, like, eventually when Susie gets closer to Chris, and while Susie was threatening Chris and everything, saying that no one would miss them if Chris were to die, suddenly Susie just ends up leaving shortly after. Uh, that Chris might have said something to her. Now, some people after this were saying that Chris has some uber edgy lore important, and while yes, that could be cool, I think it would be best if it wasn't something like that. Personally, I think it comes down to two options of what Chris said and what Chris actually said, but it also is just speculation as we could never really know. But there was some reason why Susie immediately ran out that room. In my personal belief, I think Chris said something along the lines of, I know. Or maybe they also said something along the lines of, like, are, like, are you okay? Or, like, asking Susie if she's okay, like, she's crying, or something like that. By the way, it's something that, like, spoke to Susie, where she didn't want to hurt Chris after that. And also, didn't have any ill will towards Chris. It would make sense, as chapter 1, it's almost like that didn't happen. So, I'm, so basically, I'm saying, if it was something very dark, or, like, edgy and all that whatnot, I don't think Susie would immediately, like, you know, forgive Chris, even if it was a couple months after. She would still probably be thinking, like, oh, you said this about me, like, what the heck. Whatever it was, it wasn't bad enough to think that Susie wouldn't mind being friends with Chris. To add more on to this though, Susie in the game, she stated to be a bully, but we never see any of those actions or hear about those actions. From the start of the game when Susie threatens to kill Chris and everything, it's only a threat, it's not actually a thing she does. I mean, the only thing she really does is just slam them against the locker, but that's really about it, honestly. Monster Kid says that she beats people up, but actually have, has never seen it. And Susie thinks that Caddy hates her because she stole Jockington's hat. And most importantly of all, Noelle actually didn't even think the real Susie would even care about her, thinking, you know, the Dark Worlds were just all in her head and everything. And the entire Ferris wheel scene afterwards was literally Noelle learning about the real Susie. Everyone always thinks the worst of Susie, yet the only two people who don't think the worst of her are coincidentally Chris and Lancer. And even Rousey is guilty of just assuming the worst for Susie instead of like, having confidence in her or thinking that she can be anything other than like a bully. And Rousey was trying to uh, change Susie, but even then, Rousey was still um, worried about Susie's violent nature and everything. Whereas Lancer and Chris, they take it as a good thing in some cases. Speaking of which, I think the reason for Chris's interest in Susie isn't so much romantical. I think it's because Susie is the only one actually able to ignore us, the player. Now, if you remember the tea theory stuff from the last video, I want you to remember it as I describe all this stuff. 
we can't break Susie like Noelle in chapter 1, no matter how much we try to. Susie's always going to resist our control. This actually leads me into my theory on how the T actually works and how T theory like is supposed to like show Chris's relations at least with some of the characters. I'm not sure about the other characters and their feelings, but I feel like this at least describes Chris's feelings about all the other characters. So Rousey being the lowest on the whole healing after Chris drinks them and everything is because Chris just views them as like some sort of puppet maybe. Or basically they're the lowest because they follow us the player no matter what, like 2AT they follow us. Noelle is in the mill because she is still resistant to an extent, but she still follows thinking that it's Chris giving the commands and not the soul and, uh, and whatnot. And Susie, well she only follows the player when she starts to follow Chris. She never follows us at all until that elevator conversation where she follows Chris. And then again, we can never like make her do our own decisions that we pick. She'll always do her own thing rather than following what we say. Probably why during the end of chapter 2, Chris is comfortable doing things with her like going to the carnival and doesn't give like a weird expression when we say it. Moreover, after the Spamton fight, she goes to ask Chris if they're alright. And even when we say yes, she's still worried about Chris. Susie's friendship with Chris is genuine, and Chris's friendship with Susie is genuine. Even if Susie does not know Chris's true pain with the whole soul in their body and whatever. One last short thing about Susie's character I want to bring up is that I believe that she fully thinks the Dark Worlds are completely real. And by that I mean that she doesn't know that darkness are just objects in the light world or from what we can see our darkness are just objects in the light world i mean during the start of chapter two she's completely confused on where everyone for chapter one was and later when lancer rules and S starwalker join us before leaving she thinks they ditched us and left not realizing that they became basically the items in Chris's pocket. And she didn't even know why Lancer froze until Rousey had to tell her. Though I mean, you know, maybe she just didn't know because like, we didn't know also, so that's that's fair. This leads me to believe that she honestly thinks that the Dark Worlds are real and doesn't realize how she, they work. Which could lead to a finding out in a future chapter and hopefully she doesn't have a really big overreaction, especially with Lancer potentially not being a real person. So when it comes to Susie's character as a whole, she leaves a lot of room on the table for how much our control is actually limited in this world. They have a past that we completely don't even know about and probably won't learn about unless she opens up to Chris about it at some point. Her character, although not as complex as everyone, because like, if I could describe her, she's literally just a brute type monster who doesn't know too much and isn't the smartest person, she still gives us ideas for what could come in the future chapters of this story. Will we finally be able to break Susie and cause her to listen to us the player exclusively? Or will Chris get this friendship that they seemingly are so desperate for? Well hey, I guess we need to wait another, um, I don't know, 100 years before the next game comes out. I'm really hoping it comes out this year, please, please, please Mr. Toby Fox, I'm begging you.